Lots of people seem to have an iPad lying around that doesn't get much use. But here are nine real life ways that I use my iPad every single day. Starting off with each morning when I fire up Notion. Now Notion is a scheduling and productivity app that I've used pretty much since I started my channel. And my team and I use this on a daily basis to research content ideas, plan and script the videos and schedule filming and publishing or just pretty much everything to do with this channel. Now the channel would be an absolute mess if I didn't use Notion. So I regularly have Notion open on the iPad to script the videos, to check the b-roll that I need to shoot whilst filming and just generally help keep me organized. Now when I'm back from the gym in the morning I'll settle in to reply to emails and browse a bit of social media and this is where I use the iPad mini for sidecar and I'm not talking about those oversized tin cans that you stick onto the side of a motorbike. I'm talking about using the iPad as a second display for your monitor or your MacBook. Just press the little green button in the top left of a window and then hit move to iPad and voila, the iPad is now my secondary monitor. Or rather it was before I installed iOS 17 beta on my iPad mini, which has now completely broken that feature. But it does come in handy when traveling and you just need that little bit of extra screen space when you're working off of a laptop. When I get down to actual work, which for me involves filming these videos, the mini comes in handy to control a few of my camera bits. Now, firstly, as a remote for my camera jib to get all my fancy B-roll shots and as a remote monitor for my camera. It means that I don't have to use my actual phone, which gets quite annoying at times when what I'm trying to shoot is the phone that I'm using. So having something I can use as a dedicated monitor or remote control is really, really helpful. For lunch, well, I found something that turns this productivity, entertainment and uh, kids tantrum control tablet into an even more flexible device by whacking something I've recently come across on it. And as shown here by my glamorous assistant, well, me. So as you might know already, I'm a bit of a home automation fan. Now, video coming out soon, so subscribe if you want to see that one. And although I got a mixture of Android and Apple devices all around the home, I had this clever idea a while ago to use the iPad mini as this central control hub thing for my home, which has actually now ruined the battery on my old iPad 2. But first, let me just explain here. I wanted to mount my old iPad mini 2 to the wall in my house. And I came across this magnetic charging mount from a company in the US, but they didn't ship to the UK. So a friend of mine from the US shipped me over the iPort. I paid a ridiculous amount for shipping. I proceeded to dig out a hole in my wall to fit this mount into the wall in my hallway. And this works really, really well for a while. But these things are very expensive for what they are. And having kept the iPad in place for so, so long, I've actually reduced its off charge battery life to about 14 seconds. <laughs> and now, since it's an old iPad, I have to borrow the whole freaking system again and spend even more money for one that's compatible with the latest generation model. So when I came across this alternative from Moft, I kind of thought it was too good to be true, but it's not. In fact, it is better. Firstly, you can buy just one of their cases, or if you don't like that, you can just attach this magnetic sticker to the back of your iPad. Then attach one of their sticky magnetic wall pads to the wall, slap on the iPad, and that's basically it. Now, of course, this doesn't charge, but given my experience with leaving my last one on charge all the time, that's probably a very, very good thing. And this way means you can either buy a bunch of these sticky wall pads and just have them around the house, or even just move the wall pad mount around because the mounts actually have this sticky surface on them that lets you detach them and then reattach them multiple times without losing its adhesive. It's a really, really nice touch. And now I can mount mine in the hallway for the home automation stuff, in the kitchen for I say, recipe and cooking stuff, in the kitchen room for keeping them quiet or in the toilet for I also find myself using Apple notes throughout each day and yeah yeah I know this is a really boring one but I literally use this every single day and I, I couldn't live without it well I probably could live without it but I'd just be this like disorganized mess the fact that notes shares instantly across all devices is just super super useful and as you can see I have a bunch of semi organized folders for things like my coaching, my shared folders with my colleagues, course folder notes and notes I take from other various courses I'm enrolled in. They're just, they're all there and accessible across all of my Apple devices. Also, I don't use the Apple Pencil much to take notes or even draw, but it's super fun to see some uh, doodles that turn up from time to time that my daughter draws every so often when she steals my iPad away from me always puts a really, really nice smile on my face when I'm meant to be working. Now on that note, and what a fantastic segue, it's almost as if I plan my videos. The next way that I use my iPad mini every single day is to keep the kids entertained. Now, yeah, yeah, I know it is a contentious point. And before I had kids, we always said we'd you know, never give them an iPad, but reality check, sometimes parents just need some breathing space when they're out and about with their children, out for dinner and the kids acting up, iPad mini. One car journey and kids asking a million silly questions. Are we there yet? iPad mini. <laughs> Trying to get some household chores done and kids hanging onto your leg like a limpet. 
iPad mini. Now, I am exaggerating a little, of course. <laughs> Are you kidding? They're always like that. I need 20 minutes when no one comes near me. And of course, it can be used creatively for kids as well. Like they particularly love the Apple Pencil and the notes pages just to let them draw to their heart's content. And this is where you should really get a paper like fitted to your iPad. Now, this is one of the first things that I get for any iPad and not just because they're the sponsor of this video, but because they genuinely make the iPad feel more like paper when using the Apple Pencil. You know, rather than the pencil gliding across the, the smooth glass, it adds that little bit of resistance that you get when actually writing on paper and it makes all of the difference. And now with their latest Gen 2 paper like, it also does a really good job without any noticeable changes to the screen like their previous generation. So even if you have an older generation paper like on, I'd really, really recommend checking out the second gen version as it is quite the upgrade. And if you grab one using the link down below, then you'd also be supporting this channel, which I'd hugely appreciate, of course. And I'm gonna try out something new here as well. If you're watching on a TV, just grab your phone and scan this QR code, and this will take you straight to the right place to buy the paper like. So yeah, do check them out. And a huge thank you for paper like for making an awesome product. So once the kids are in bed, there are a few ways that I use the iPad mini. Now the first came to me unexpectedly actually, as I was watching the latest Avatar film whilst trying not to wake the rest of my family up. So if you grab a pair of Apple headphones, now this works with most of them, but I grabbed my Apple AirPod Maxes as they're just far more comfortable to use when sitting still. Then just play any movie that has a decent surround soundtrack to go with it and just be blown away with what is basically a Dolby surround cinema system in your home, but in your head, <laughs> in your headphones. When you're out and about, you know, traveling or an airplane, you can still get that. Now this sounds very, very close to my actual home theater 5.1 surround system that's like hooked up my proper TV. And all of this combined just makes it possible to watch, you know, your favorite shows on a smaller screen and in various different locations, but still with a huge, huge soundstage. And if you are listening with transparency enabled, then you can hold a full on conversation with someone next to you while still watching, still getting that same fantastic, you know, better than 5.1 surround sound kind of experience. But I did find the iPad mini not just great for consuming content, but almost as this kind of add on to when I'm watching on a big screen TV, where it is just impossible to leave YouTube comments when watching on a TV. But I can grab my iPad mini whilst watching those videos, and then I can browse around and leave comments and even look at what I want to watch next on the TV. The other way I use my iPad mini is as a replacement for my Kindle. Now, okay, so it doesn't have a bajillion hour battery life like the Kindle does, but if you are going away somewhere, you only need to pack the iPad and you've got an entertainment station and an ebook reader all in one device. It's actually been years since I've read an actual physical book and also real books are really heavy and who has space for like a library in their bag anyway? Now I do actually have a Kindle, but I still find myself always picking up the iPad mini instead. I've actually just finished the Storyteller by Dave Grohl and I've just downloaded It Doesn't Have To Be Crazy At Work, which was recommended to me, which is my next one. I've also heard some science behind both reading and listening to a book on Audible at the same time is a way of actually remember what you've just read slash listened to. So there's a fun little fact there for you. And you can do all the usual ebook stuff on the iPad too, like highlighting and consolidating notes, which is all super useful if you're kind of like me and often forget things that you're reading. And that brings me on to when I'm not reading, watching or working on something, which I'm slowly getting better at. I like to play a little bit of Clash Royale and a few other games. And I love playing games on this bigger screen. It's far better and far more enjoyable than playing on like a smaller you know, iPhone screen or something. Now I'm not one of those people that has, you know, thousands of games installed. I just don't have time between family and work and days out. I normally just get fixed on one game. Firstly, it was Clash of Clans where I kind of got stuck around Town Hall level 11 or 12, I think it was. Then I moved on to Clash Royale and I've never really moved on since then. Now that said, I do also have an app called Floki installed, which is this piano app where you can follow along with sheet music to learn songs. Little known fact about myself, I actually taught myself to play piano around must be like 15 years ago. And I've also played the drums since I was literally about like two years old. And before kids, we used to have a baby grand piano in what was a pretty tiny living room. but there's just not the space for that anymore. So I've downgraded to an electric one that I can play at any time of the day. Maybe I can work that into a video somehow one day, or if anyone wants to just like jam around, give me a shout. And there's one called Simply Piano on here as well, which actually my little one uses to teach him to play the piano, which it does by just listening for, you know, which keys are being pressed on the piano, or you can hook it up via USB to be way more accurate. It's really, really cool what technology can do nowadays. So if you want to learn more about why the iPad mini is really the only iPad you should consider buying, then check out this video where I explain it more detail.